Welcome to MAKE, Hands-On Intro to Engineering Design, a course taught at the University of South Florida. In this video, we are going to be discussing advanced sketching techniques, including sketch constraints and sketch modifiers. Hello, today we are going to be discussing uh, some advanced sketching features. These include sketch constraints, construction lines, and some sketch modifiers. Sketch constraints are useful uh, to define relationships between primitive uh, entities in the sketch, including lines and points and circles. Um, and you may have noticed when drawing some lines or any of these other primitive shapes that you see some icons that will show up as you're trying to place these points. And those are uh, Autodesk Inventor actually auto-applying some constraints that it thinks that you probably want uh, to be applied. Next we're going to discuss some construction lines. And these are used to define constraints but don't actually contribute to the sketch profile. And in this way, you can accurately place components or primitives within the sketch uh, without those lines actually showing uh, when you want to create an extrusion. Finally, uh, we're going to discuss uh, some sketch modifiers, specifically trim, which is the most useful out of all of the sketch modifiers. So we can get started by drawing an example. Uh, we're going to be drawing today is a, a cam lobe and um, we're going to get started here by just starting in the same way we did with the other sketches by clicking the create 2d sketch um, in the upper left hand corner so we'll click that and it brings up the available planes and we'll select the top plane here so in order to ensure that as we are applying the uh, sketch constraints um, the sketch doesn't do anything that we don't want it to do, we have to fully constrain it. And that's where the construction lines will come in. So the first thing we're going to draw is a construction line. Um, this will represent the center line of our cam. And we do that by first clicking the line um, entity and then clicking construction in the upper right hand corner. We can then draw our line by starting here at the center point, clicking up vertically, and notice as I uh, bring the line vertically, you can see this small icon uh, to the lower right of the mouse pointer show up. And this is actually uh, Autodesk Inventor auto-applying the vertical constraint. That symbol is the vertical constraint. And if you're ever confused about a, what a constraint might be, you can actually um, go and highlight the constraints here uh, in the constraint section of the sketching area, and it will actually bring up um, a little description and tell you uh, what that uh, constraint actually does. <clears throat> so let's go back to drawing our line. We still have construction selected. So we'll draw our line vertically and we're going to make it a five millimeter vertical line. I'm going to hit escape to get out of the new line uh, interface. And as you can see, we have our line here drawn. Um, a blue line indicates fully constrained and it is dotted to indicate that it is a construction line. Um, a word of caution here when drawing construction lines, it's often easy to forget to unselect construction uh, and if you are to draw another primitive entity, it will show up as a construction line. So just unclick the construction and we can get back to drawing the profile. So to draw the cam lobe here, we can start out by clicking the top of this line and this will actually constrain the center point of this circle to this point at the end of the line. If you see um, there is uh, another little constraint popping up and this is indicating that the line is going to be um, coincident, the, the center point of the circle is going to be coincident with the end point of the line. So we can draw, drag our circle out here and we're going to select uh, five millimeter diameter, hit enter, and then we're going to draw a second circle here. We're going to make that 2.5 millimeter diameter. Um, now for the other end of the lobe, I'm going to click and select two millimeters. So as you can see, the uh, part is starting to tape shape here. The last lines we're going to draw, we're going to connect the lines from this circle to this circle and the line here to here. So as you can see, the majority of the sketch features are properly constrained except for the two lines that we drew. And this is where we're going to actually use the sketch constraints and apply them ourselves. What we're going to do as 
a, with this cam we want a smooth surface profile over the entire cam. So mathematically what that ne means is that all of the lines need to be tangent to each other. So we're going to go up here and select our tangent constraint and then we're just going to select the entities that we want uh, that constraint to be applied to. So we'll select the circle here and this line and as you can see the line is now connected to the circle but also uh, tangent to its edge. We can continue to apply the tangent constraint here. We'll select this line in this circle and now the line is uh, tangent to both circles and fully constrained. So we can continue on here and here and now you can see we have a very smooth shape. However, we still have uh, many profile lines on the interior of the uh, part. This actually isn't a problem if you want to extrude it, but for simplicity, we want to remove these ex excess lines. So the way we do that is to actually use a sketch modifier. And in this case, we're going to use the trim tool located here in the modify section of the sketch ribbon. So we're going to select trim, and what trim allows us to do is just remove parts of a line um, in between two other, two other lines. So if you notice here, you can see the dotted line appear on top of this section of the line, and if I click it, the line is removed. So we can go here and remove all of the lines that are unnecessary. And now we have a fully constrained uh, sketch of our cam lobe that uh, we could then extrude. This concludes our video. Thanks for watching.